Okay, so here's the uh, so-called workshop, which is the barbecue. It's uh, doing a pretty good job of pretending to be a workbench. Uh, there's my helper over there. Hey, buddy. How you doing, Bozo? There's my little mate. Moral support. Anyway, this is basically the start of the uh, junction box uh, where, the, where the coax basically comes in uh, and the speaker lead heads out. Hopefully this is the second video and you've already had a look at the first one which is basically an introduction by the time I get around to do it. An intro introduction on, on the cobweb antenna itself. I'll have links to the, the plans for the antenna and, and the website where I basically uh, picked up these plans. But what I'm endeavouring to build here, you know, to cover up that light, uh, is that junction box there. And there she is there. It's coming along pretty well at this point. Basically because I haven't started cutting anything and messing anything up yet, but uh, hopefully this will end up looking like that by the time I've finished with it. What I've got, I've, uh, rather than uh, making the jumpers out of solid wire, which he's done, um, I've got this wire here, there it is, which I bought ages ago to make the original fan dipole. It's actually a solid core solid copper core which uh, comes in real handy for making jumpers and the like so what I've done there is just stripped a bunch of this to make the straight through jumpers and I'm actually leaving it partially insulated to make the uh, jumpers go across so there's, there's no concerns about uh, contact between the two points there hopefully that'll work out well I've only drilled these down slightly uh, those so they can be moved out. I thought I was actually going to pull these out then wire them up and then drill them back in but I've actually found that it's easy enough and not too small to get my hands in there and uh, do it all that way. So what I'm doing here at this point I thought I'd just jump in and show you is I'm actually making these jumpers here the ones that are bent up and uh, go over the straight through ones uh, I believe that's actually on the page down below as well just go down okay there's an image right there of the jumper that I'm actually making and I figured I was just going to go through and just make a whole bunch of these but what I'm actually doing is making the jumper putting it in position here because uh, look to be honest I'd rather work smart rather than work hard so what I'm actually doing is putting the jumper in rather than pre-bending them into that shape there just making a simple u-shape putting them in and then grabbing them and bending them up just like that okay there you go just like that so that actually saves me having to mess about with a whole bunch of bends just make a simple u-shape drop them in screw it up and uh, bend it back into out of place so there like that uh, apologies for the light i'll just put that on permanent there we go so at the end of the day we get the same result I also like the idea of having these jumpers uh, insulated as well, leaving them insulated. Because as you can see from the image here, hang on again, let me just scroll back up. Oh, not too far. Talk amongst yourselves. There we go. They actually run over the top of the other jumpers. Uh, and later on, if you're following the plan for this, you'll actually see that you're going to dump some coax in on top of this as well for, for a choke. Uh, obviously there's always a possibility that that may push those jumpers and may make contact for whatever reason. Uh, I just think it's a little bit extra safe here. Alright, now because I'm not as smart as I thought I was, you can see where I've put these jumpers in here. Now the outside uh, insulation plastic on these uh, is quite thick so when I try and put two of those in, as per the image here, what I actually need to do is I've actually got these two in here um, but I forgot to actually jumper those two together which is what I want to do here and as you can see from the thickness of that uh, insulation um, it's a bit thicker and then to try and squeeze another one in at this point here is going to be fairly tough because uh, the insulation is going to be too thick but the best thing about this uh, 
wire that I've got here, this cable, whatever you want to call it, is, there it is there, it's actually double insulated. Um, so, if I can put this down just here, I'll actually get you a close look at it. You can see there's another red insulation on the inside. Um, now, if you grab hold of that and the wire, pull it out, you actually get that right there. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is going to de take this uh, outside insulation on, uh, which is going to make this much smaller. It's still going to be insulated like I want it, um, rather than being uh, open like that other copper runners I've got there. The instructions only cover five bands. I think it goes down to about 10 metres, uh, I think is the lowest it goes down to, but I'm actually looking at uh, putting in a six as well. I've actually got, as per the images from the first video, I've actually got a tri-band vertical out there and it, it covers two meters seventy centimeters and six uh, and it's quite effective compared to the dipoles that I've got up at the moment both the fan and the uh, mystery antenna so I'm looking at actually trying to get something that's comparable to that but not in a vertical whether that's going to be possible or not I don't know I've actually got a fiberglass uh, flag holder, whatever you want to call it, pole, uh, squid pole, or the like, inside that I've actually wound up last night to, uh, so there's the old VX 8DR over there, once I actually get to a point uh, where I use that a little bit, I'll, I'll do a review on that, uh, getting back to this, um, so yeah, I'm looking to probably cover six as well, from the plans though, um, it, it gives a different length of the wires, um, as they they go around the actual the frame but there's no formula there um, and, and what I did was went through the different formulas and and where the the join points of, of the two wires uh, for each band are in relation to the actual total length of the wires I, I thought there might be some correlation a simple you know fraction or, or percentage where, where that join was um, but running through the figures on that it, it doesn't seem to correlate to any sort of standard formula that I'm aware of you know straightforward one so what I need to do is get on the web and see whether I can find out what the formula for that is um, and, uh, and and how to approach that and then if I can put one on there for six I will so that's why I've actually got an additional set of jumpers in there uh, so I can make it actually a six band cobweb rather than the, the five as per the plans that I've got here what I'm actually trying to achieve at this point is to get all the electrical stuff done and out of the way, obviously get the box made, uh, make the coax choke, um, hang on, let me just see if I can move that down there, that's what I'm actually about to work on now, the choke which actually sits inside that junction box. Um, I'm also going to see if I can cut up the, the, the speaker wire and, and get all those lengths, get all the, uh, all the joins made as per that oh, that's basically the, the effectively a schematic for one bean so you'll see coax comes in goes for the choke uh, oops sorry into the junction box uh, runs into there part way along which is like I'm saying the issue that I've got with six meters is I don't know where this solder point is and sit there um, so what you actually do is cut into the shielding of both those wires, solder it, and then run the rest of the length all the way around um, to, to, well, join or not join at, at the end, uh, however you intend to do that. Um, so at this point, I'm just going to run through, do the choke, get all that set up, put a, a socket on the end of that once it comes out of the, out of the junction box, and probably start measuring up uh, these speaker leads, do the soldering, get the uh, shrink tube on those and hopefully I'll have the junction box and all that done I don't know, maybe in about an hour or so and then I can start working on the bit that I'm going to find a bit more challenging I think which is actually the structure and the supports um, mainly because the plans that I've got here uh, the, what I'm finding is that it's, it's specifying the need so many different pieces uh, to actually create it but I'm a little bit confused as to where some of those pieces fit um, so hopefully once I you know get through this the, the, the manual stuff then uh, I get around to actually creating the the framework hopefully it'll all fall in place nicely I'm also looking at maybe simplifying that a little bit but uh, we'll see how we go